and shift you to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ welcome to Christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord reverend sam thank you so much um i sincerely appreciate and honor you and this opportunity to be a blessing to god's people please help me bless reverend sam and his dear wife amen and great honor to pastor o every man and woman of god here may the lord honor you in jesus name thank you very much sir for this opportunity i just sat back listening to you and um i was very touched and humbled you know when people say all these things about me i join them in listening and i'm wondering who they are talking about there are no self-made people in this kingdom a man can receive nothing except it is given to him by God. I trust that the session we'll be having now will be most transforming in Jesus' name. Can we lift our hands to heaven in one minute and just ask the Lord to speak to us? Go ahead and ask him to speak to your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer The one who is able to help men You are Ebenezer oh. You are Ebenezer my testimony you are Ebenezer the lifter of men you are Ebenezer sing it one time with understanding because he's lifting you you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer. Father, speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. May I request in the name of Jesus that you pay very close attention to the things we'll be learning. I really respect the vision and intelligence behind a conference like this. These are dedicated moments when I sat back just listening to all the professionals speak and reverend sam was just giving me a hint as to who was talking you know i said my god can you imagine sitting here for a day two three days under this atmosphere of spirituality and intelligence when christ is revealed he's revealed as the power of god and is revealed as the wisdom of god praise the name of the lord I'm teaching very briefly I, I really see it more of a training than a teaching just to lend my contribution to what God is doing the power to continue the power to continue the power to continue will be examining the principles that make for sustainable impact the key word sustainable Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says, better, will we have it projected? All right. So it says, let's read together, please. One to read. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Just the A part. One more time. Better is the end of a thing. The Bible mentions two very important words, one beginning 
and the other end one beginning and the other end we're not teaching on ending my focus is on beginning and continuing I found out from scripture through the power of mentorship and from experience that as far as advancement is concerned there are two dimensions of power we need the power to begin and the power to continue and the dynamics of accessing this power is totally different the power to begin anything and the power to continue in job chapter 8 and verse 7 job chapter 8 and verse 7 the bible says job 8 and verse 7 do we have it there it says though thy beginning was small yet thy later end should it didn't say will it's an expectation if you walk in keeping with certain principles based on god's pattern that it is all right when your beginning is small but it says your later end should greatly increase it doesn't guarantee it will he's saying it should increase are we together so everyone has a beginning to begin means to start to begin means to initiate to begin means to ignite the process revelation chapter 1 and verse 18 the concept of beginning is so powerful that god names himself after that concept he calls himself alpha and omega then he calls himself the beginning and the end hallelujah new king james version if we can have it please genesis 26 i'll begin my reading from verse 13. this is really where i'm teaching from genesis 26 from verse 13. just needed to put that foundation that it is important to understand how to begin and to continue let's read together ready one to read and the man began to prosper uh-huh and continued prospering until he became very prosperous just hang on we'll read to 16 but we'll take it carefully the bible says the man began began means it was not his experience before that time are we together now this is good news it means i can begin to begin means to capture into your space an experience that once was not your experience before that time that means i can start something that was not there i can bring into my space through knowledge a reality that was not captured in my experience it is very powerful men can begin men can begin is the privilege that god gave us men can begin i can begin to make progress i can begin to prosper i can begin to know god so just because i'm deficient of a reality or a dimension does not mean that is the end of me i can begin to do things right i can begin beginning is very powerful because it means beginning means the end of hopelessness are we together now and the man began to prosper began to prosper now how many times he tried we do not know but one thing for sure is the bible tells us that his prosperity and his exploits had a date for its start and the man began for someone this is the conference where you begin to make notable constructive advance in your life in the name of jesus christ every human on earth has what we call a birth date a birth date means when you manifested in this realm not when you started your formation everybody's age is plus at least seven months eight months we don't count that we count the day we saw you not from a machine the day you manifested physically is when we begin your counting is that true yes we call it a birth date and from that time on every time of the year you commemorate knowing that i am i was born but i am still alive the day you die you are not the one who talks about it 
someone else will say finally this person has come to an end in as much as we know living in this physical realm is concerned listen very carefully the bible says the man began to prosper and you would think the bible would just say he prospered but then the bible says and continued prospering now that is a very serious message he began to prosper why would the bible now capture the fact that that man who began to prosper is still at it till now there is no guarantee that because he began he would continue this is a very powerful information the man began to prosper and after 10 years he's still at it the man began to move forward statistic tells us that more than 80 percent of businesses churches that start die within the first year is that true so don't you downplay this issue of continuation i'm interested in the continuing part the bible says he began to prosper and he continued prospering until he became very prosperous let's finish up to 16 14 now the bible says for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great number of servants now a problem was about to be introduced to his life as a result of continuing that problem was not there when he started but his consistency was leading him to learn something pay attention <laughs> The Bible says some people were now invited into his world by reason of his results. The Bible says so on account of his consistency, the Philistines envied him. 15. Now the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father and they had filled them with earth we're reading to 16 and Abimelech said to Isaac go away from us why for you are much mightier than we may the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ so the Bible shows us clearly here that it takes a separate dynamics to continue as it takes to start. That it is usually very easy. All you need is determination and to work in keeping with a few principles and then push with faith and you can start. The beautiful thing about starting is that accuracy is not required. Determination and motion is all that is needed to start are we together now yes you are not given the liberty to criticize anybody for starting accuracy and perfection and mastery is not needed when you start there are people who drive are we still together there are people who drive and when they begin their process of learning to drive and then now driving on the road they put something L now no matter what the person is doing on the road by reason of that l it already discourages you from saying you are not doing well he already told you i'm moving but i'm a learner you do not expect accuracy or perfection or flawlessness from a starter in fact you encourage the person for having the audacity to overcome that inertia is that true but remaining remaining and sustaining your result will require it, it will be foolish and childish to criticize and fight a young man or a young boy for starting anything uh -uh. the bible says when he started the philistines were watching him they were not concerned about his starting but when he continued invited or not they came into his space he was now managing things that he did not face when he was starting many people may have the power to start but the stamina to continue requires a set of dynamics that until you are taught you may give up on the way are we together the bible talked about moses 
when God motivated him and engraced him to go and meet Pharaoh, he went and I'm not sure what he expected, but he left with such embarrassment and sadness. And the Bible says he continued to go to Pharaoh again and again and again and again. It took stamina for him to be able to bring the nation of Israel out of Egypt, even though it was God sending him. Just because God is before you does not guarantee that you will start and continue just by default. There are laws and my assignment is to be able to guide us by the spirit because every one of us here, I presume that we are leaders in some respect. So we've started something. There is a vision, there is a ministry, there is a business. And many of you, by reason of your walking in keeping with the principles you have been taught, you are now rising consistently. Let me inform you that there is a threshold in success that when you reach, certain things will start happening in your life that it is important for you to know. In biology, there are children for as long as their children, maybe under 12, 13, there are certain things that don't happen to them. When they get to 11, 12, 13, their parents now would sit them and start telling them there is a transition in your life. Is that true? Because by reason of your consistency in growth, you are now going to be facing certain challenges psychologically, biologically that you must be prepared for. If a child is not prepared for that phase, there are usually a plethora of catastrophes because now the person is not managing failure. You have to be taught to manage success. Most people do something about failure alone. They don't do something about great success. The burden of being consistently successful is by far greater than the burden of failure. And the man began to prosper and he continued prospering. And the Bible says, and the Philistines envied him. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Let's talk about continuing. Proverbs 24 and verse 10. The Bible says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, I draw a lot of inspiration from athletes and um, when you watch people run marathon there is the long distance race called marathon where they have kilometers to cover could be around a circle or just across you know a predefined region now when they start usually there would be not less than 50 people some already know they will not finish is that true some want to give their strength a chance to see how far it can go but there are some who start with the intention of continuing and finishing when the gun is shot everyone some begin to laugh at themselves as they start they know that they are not prepared to finish but in the midst of that crowd you will see a few very slim usually tall deep Determined fellows who don't talk to anyone they start moving many times they are usually not in front because they, they have mastered that thing they are somewhere they are not behind but they are not in front they know that the dynamics will change starting is easy someone will enjoy the 10 minutes of knowing that I'm leading and the one who will actually win knows that this man is wasting his time the fact that you are obsessed about winning at the beginning or being first it tells that professional that you are not even going to go far because there is a skill to it everyone starts and then eventually something called exhaustion exhaustion is a product of time and diligence not laziness you can't be exhausted when you are not even doing anything and gradually their pace and their energy begins to deplete are we learning now and you find out that a few people now start thinking do I continue? Do I stay? What is the risk of staying? What is the risk of continuing? A time will come, your mind won't give you a chance to think again. Your body will just say, I'm exhausted. Stop. 
and people stop with all kinds of skills some fall some just halt some are angry some even faint and yet those few by the time they get to maybe midway the dynamics change you will notice their breathing will change you will notice that not they cannot even turn to the left as much as turning to the left can distract them and finally they run and by the last round you will be surprised to see they have they've stored energy that you never imagined they would look like they wouldn't make it and then they would run and win and you see them stand breathing just take a cup of water or so and they are fine i draw a lot of inspiration there because it shows me how people run this race in life and destiny there are people who start ministry as though it's going to happen for one month and they will rest they are happy and excited they've been burning with messages mysteries after mysteries one i mean they are itching to share everything and after two months they've exhausted the messages they open the bible and it looks like it's just a white sheet of paper there is nothing written there again The stamina to continue comes from four channels. The stamina to continue comes from four channels. Are we together? That means beginning your destiny, your ministry, your business, and so on and so forth. That is commendable, but that is not enough guarantee that you will continue and you will last because as you remain in any system the requirements on you become greater there is a greater requirement of perfection there are things people would forgive you about yesterday but they won't forgive the tomorrow's version of you they expect look at moses moses for his argument with god at a certain level moses was prohibited from entering the promised land zechariah's mouth was shut because as a priest who had had deep encounters with god he shouldn't be asking the angel that question and he said i will shut your mouth the same question mary asked and the angel answered her look how unfair that was but he was dealing with people at two different dimensions you can do something a starter did and god will, god will honor that person and let him go and punish you in a way that you will be surprised because to whom much is given much is expected are we learning now this is very powerful it takes stamina to continue stamina to remain stamina to lead your field stamina to continue to make consistent exploits number one the first channel where the stamina and the strength for continuity comes from is humility write this humility you want to continue you need humility because let me tell you these results are deceptive results are deceptive they flatter results have the ability to peg your productivity at a level failure can inspire you to get up and start again but you you will be surprised to know the level of impedance that your current result can pause to your advancing someone shout no way okay. humility what is humility victory over the pride of life the pride of life is the self glorification that comes on account of obvious results if you don't have results people will insult you for being proud but if you have results it seems to create some justification let me tell you this ask anyone who has lasted in the realm of success ask your pastor ask any man of god you know they will tell you the first skill you need to manage that realm is a delicate realm when you stand on that platform of success is so slippery if you are not taught the art of standing there you will fall can i tell you look at this everybody watch me if i fall from here the injury is minimal 
but if I fall from here I most likely may lose my life let me tell you what pride does pride accelerates your rising in your mind so that your fall will be very significant the Bible says to not exalt yourself more highly is someone learning the skill that keeps people to continue number one humility a time will come in your life where everything will be shouting your results and it's not wrong what is humility the unashamedness to acknowledge god as the basis for all that you are and all that you do do you know the higher you rise the more inconveniencing it will be to step back and allow Jesus to be seen because um, like Reverend Sam was sharing you can imagine sharing his background and all of that and most of us share similar stories chances are excellent that when God begins to lift you there is a point to prove to naysayers there is a point to prove to those who vow that you will never rise there is a point to prove to people who are expectantly waiting for your fall so chances are excellent that you get distracted proving that point that you forget that we only rise because there is a hand lifting us is someone learning humility james chapter 4 from verse 6 james chapter 4 from verse 6 Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 4. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resisted the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. This is a very powerful kingdom mystery for continuity that I learned in my own life. And I keep praying all the time that God would grant me grace. Can I tell you, it takes a lot of effort and participation to remain humble. Don't mind people who say it's easy. They've not, you, it's easy to be humble when you have nothing. Huh. When the nations sing your praise, it will take intention to remain humble. Is that true? Because there are a number of us here that God probably brought us to help us. You are already marking time. Because your results, thank God for the little you are beginning to see. But not knowing that God wants to measure a thousand cubits again. But pride is already distracting you. Pride can flatter. Pride can distract. It's important to receive the applause of people. But you must know when it has gone beyond its, its allowance and by yourself create systems that manage it. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. Humility. You want to continue? Your stamina and your staying power will be derived from your ability to be and to remain humble. This I have learned. Ask anyone who has lasted in business in ministry and all of that you find out that behind their sustaining impact and results is a life of humility now let me tell you what pride is not pride does not mean um when you acknowledge the blessings of god and you subscribe to the blessings and the privilege just the privileges that come at your level and as you are rising that is not pride i need to say this because mediocres call anything higher than them pride anything higher than them they call it pride so if i take water from this bottle instead of pure water to somebody based on his level it is pride and his rights to him the only problem is i am not him are we together for someone maybe flying a business class or flying a private jet he can call it pride but you see it is relative to your realm of achievement it is relative to your realm of reality we have to balance this are we together yes as humble as jesus was and is 
he was not the one rocking the boat taking him to the other side the bible said he was sleeping justifiably so because he's the one doing the casting of the demons he's the one doing all of this and you guys do the other work and let me rest so we have to uh, let me tell you something we'll, we'll get there shortly you have to sustain the courage to conquer the emotional blackmail that people bring when they do not find explanation as to your growth they will bring all kinds of reasons and call everything pride if god has blessed you rest in the fact that he has helped you don't punish yourself in the name of humility so i'm telling you what humility is there are some things i will never do you will not find me washing my clothes it's a waste of my time it's not it's not about there is god has given someone a vision to be a dry cleaner he will do it better it will save my time there is no amount of preaching that will make me go. it's not that i cannot do it my time means a lot more i rather invest that time in doing something constructive are we together now but it is fine and honest for we have to acknowledge the fact that pride destroys the danger with pride is not just that state is the person who will fight you the person who fights you when you are proud is god if the devil fights you you go to god to help you but if god fights you do you meet a man of god to help you what oil do you put on your head to fight you when god is the one fighting may the lord grant us grace to be humble in the name of jesus christ number two very quickly the stamina to continue comes from your ability to continue learning to continue learning and to contend for improvement we continue in this kingdom we continue our exploits we are sustained I think one of the facilitators here made that statement to continue improving and to keep learning today's excellence will certainly be tomorrow's mediocrity and you have to learn and reinvent yourself and grow and stretch let me show you a scripture that really really purged me and gave me the ability to keep pressing as though i did not know anything first corinthians 8 and verse 2 first corinthians 8 and verse 2 the second key we are discussing is the passion to keep learning the passion to contend for learning and improvement first corinthians 8 and verse 2 please read with me if you can see it ready read if anyone thinks that he knows anything he says he knows nothing yet as he ought to know you know masters and champions by their passion to learn more thank god for the things i know but god must grant you the grace to know how to learn what you don't know it's a grace that must be given to you from god to pursue knowledge strategic knowledge in areas where you do not know let me give you an instance for instance um For those of you who are in ministry ministry in the north teaches you a lot about morality and character but it does not teach you so much about structure and administration in fact most pentecostal circles do not understand structure and administration they understand the ministry of the holy spirit and impact but most pentecostal charismatics do not last because they are not mentored to understand the power of systems and structures that's why you find ministries like the anglican catholic church and all of these orthodox circles that sometimes we laugh at they may not be as uh, impactful as we want from a spiritual standpoint respectfully speaking now but i can tell you their structure will last no individual's failure or success can destroy the structure the structure is greater than any individual but in pentecostal and charismatic circles even one person's mistake can can tilt the ministry for many years the ministry is a merciless reflection of the individual he's if he improves you will see if he backslides you will see so i made up my mind that in addition 
to learning and understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit and other things, I would have to submit myself to understand administration, to understand structure, if I truly desire to last. And let me tell you, this is an area in life and ministry that does not come free. You will pay for it with humility. You will pay for it financially. You, it will sting your ego. You will have to sit down and start learning afresh. Maybe this is already a word for someone. You are wondering why you cannot expand beyond a certain limit. Even though you know that intrinsically you have the value to offer. Your structure is as powerful as your gift. Because a great oil in a small vessel will still not serve. It says borrow vessels, borrow not a few, so that the gift that is within can find expression. You must commit yourself to strategic learning. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible says that God made two great lights. Please say two great lights. It says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Then he says he made the stars also. He made two great lights. You must contend for knowledge. Please let me challenge every one of us, especially those of us who God has helped by his mercy. I was very humbled and touched when, you know, Reverend Sam was just mentioning the things that he does, you know, just coming and sneaking into Koinonia. We're discussing that earlier on in his office. It takes a lot of humility for that to happen. But you see, let me tell you this. Never get embarrassed when it has to do with knowledge. When I came and I sat down here, the few minutes that I spent, you can't imagine the things that I learned. Just listening to them and as he was telling me, this man is this, this man is that. When I sit before people who know what I do not know, I don't contribute, I learn. For many of you, you contribute even in the midst of ignorance. When it is very clear that you have no idea, there's no result to show. Don't, don't feel, this is training. I told you, I told you earlier on. This is training. Don't feel embarrassed. You must discipline yourself to keep quiet when you don't know. It's cheaper than embarrassing yourself and recycling your pain and ignorance again and again. Someone say knowledge. Can I tell you this? Any kind of knowledge will not bless you. It has to be specific to the area of darkness. You must be able to write the areas of ignorance in your life. How do you know the areas of ignorance? By the absence of results. Darkness is a clue that you need light there. Thank God for darkness. Because without darkness, you cannot know where light should go. Are we together? examine the areas of darkness in your life i may be doing well in ministry but what of your finances you find out that this finance thing is it doesn't seem to open up you are not the first to do ministry you are not the first to do business find out can i tell you here is the formula go to them that sell and buy god will never never leave his church without people that sell i'm not just speaking with respect to ministry alone everything you are looking for there are those who have it and there are those who have it enough to sell it the only thing is that you don't buy it with money let me tell you the currency you used to buy from them that sell humility meekness endurance you have to endure their personalities to receive that which god has given them you cannot want to be taught at your own terms. A student does not learn at his own terms. That's a lazy student who will not go far. Adaptation is proof of honor. You have to endure a lot when you are determined to learn, especially from people who have results. If you are Elisha, endure Elijah's temper and learn what it takes to succeed in the prophetic. Because although he's a temperous man, he still is the one carrying the anointing. And you would think because of his temper, God will take away the anointing. You endure it. Hmm. It's amazing how God works, isn't it? Yes. Are we learning? This is very powerful. Many people want to learn. They want to grow. But they desire to be spoon-fed. 
bring it to me i won't pursue just bring it let me tell you this the proof of passion is pursued every time you are passionate about something you stand up and go and look for the answer why is this thing not working why is ministry not working why is business not working through desire proverbs 18 and verse 1 a man having separated himself the bible says he seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom there are routines of learning that i must honor every day otherwise sleep no matter how tired i am is an is a covenant of knowledge i will not go to bed until and unless and there is no excuse a covenant is a non-emotional binding listen you intend to grow and you challenge yourself looking at the weather waiting looking at your appetite and all of that notwithstanding there are times i return late and tired but i know i am bound by this covenant of growth i went up by revelation and you see the higher you rise just like pastor was saying many people begin to depend on your continuity when you are it, it becomes wickedness at a certain level to plateau because now you are not living for yourself alone so many people are drawing their inspiration someone is depending on your message to find the sermon for his own church someone is depending on your your the dexterity in your business preachers are depending on how good you are in your fashion so we dress well don't backslide for our sake Are, are you learning now yes the passion to learn pastor i submit to you and i do this with every sense of respect and responsibility many preachers are lazy i repeat many preachers are lazy five minutes bible study casual stumbling into a video oh it's two minutes let me listen to it you don't command power and command influence that way it takes intention and aggression don't pity your mind when it has to do with growth your mind is not tired give it the information that it will use to create your reality by the truth it says sell it not please let's obtain grace from god to be disciplined god is not a herbalist he will not commit certain levels of graces and anointings you know and sometimes i say this with every sense of humility when people see some of the things that god is doing they just think all that is making it happen is just the anointing and just luck <laughs> he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake you can get to the field by mistake please hear what i'm telling you it takes intention and let me tell you something with knowledge when you have it you have gotten it you don't fear again you can lay hold on this truth i submit to you that knowledge drives fear fear is derived from ignorance fear is derived from ignorance are you getting what i'm saying now this is very important you must obtain grace from god with passion and with intention obtain grace from god to go for knowledge continuous learning continuous learning continuous learning first timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16 first timothy 4 15 and 16 very quickly first timothy 4 15 and 16 first timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16 do not forget what we're teaching it says meditate on these things give yourself entirely or wholly to them that your progress may be evident to all meditate on these things king james says give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all 
There is a relationship between lack of study and shame. It says study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Someone needs to be inspired this afternoon. I'm tired of celebrating and recycling ignorance. It's time for me to rise to a higher level. You have to outsource intelligence and information beyond your current horizon. Can I tell you, if you celebrate mediocrity, a time will come all the people that follow you will have nothing to learn from you again. There is a level of leadership called leadership by results. People will not follow you indefinitely. The dexterity of your result, which is a testament of your knowledge, has to be what would drive people to keep following you. Someone say knowledge. You have to commit to continuous development, continuous learning. Number three, very quickly. This is a very powerful one. What is the third key to continue and to remain? You must build systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values. You must build systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values. Systems and structures. Because when you begin to command results, when you begin to advance producing notable results listen very carefully there are many things that begin to happen around your life distractions challenges persecutions etc but one of the things that happen listen when you begin to succeed there are many legitimate things that will come into your life and your space and it can be distracting you have to create systems and structures to manage important things that can distract you acts chapter 6 something began to happen when the early church started advancing on the day of pentecost 3000 people were saved and then they kept having people the church was growing multiplying great results and watch what happened now in those days what days those days of advancement those days of exploits the bible says when the number of the disciples was what multiplication has a serious effect most of you your prayer for increase is not answered because the structure to manage the things that come when increase comes is not there now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying the bible says there arose a complaint there will always be conflict there will always be issues that will arise legitimate issues that require your intelligence and before you know it you will be distracted from what brought you to that level there arose a complaint against the hebrews please go to kjv so that we can understand now the bible says that the grecians and the hebrews now started having issues why because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration so now they were blessed enough to even minister to widows verse 2 we're reading to verse 4 then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples that means the 12 were now not the only disciples they had raised other disciples structure and systems they raised Okay, they called the multitudes of the disciples unto them and said, now hear this carefully. It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. My question is, is serving tables wrong? Remember, that's how they started. They started by serving tables. Now the responsibility upon them, they cannot combine the ministry of the word and serving tables. Listen carefully. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, 
full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Can you see the condition to serve tables in the early church? This is the condition for ministry in our day. And yet this was what they needed to go through to be qualified to serve tables. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. Read verse 4 together. Let's read in concert. Are you ready? One, two, read. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. The third key. You must create systems and structures that protect your focus and your values. Increase comes with a plethora of side effects. One of it is distraction from your vision. And let me tell you this. We must obtain grace from God because most leaders have trust issues. And legitimately so. If you have survived in any organization, in ministry or business for a while, I'm sure your heart would have been battered by the reality of the human nature. And chances are excellent that when you go through several disappointments, it becomes difficult to trust people. This is where distraction comes from. The man of God, the businessman wants to do everything. You have five outlets of your business. You want to manage everything by yourself. You don't know that you are growing older. You don't know that you may not be able to have that capacity to stand. But we will give ourselves continually. There are many people who started as ministers of the gospel and right now have become administrators. They are concerned about the details of the finances, legitimately so. Details of this and that and the core ministry from whence the grace came that announced them, they have left it. There are many things that I don't put my hands into so that I can focus on this. Many of you right now, I will tell you where your spiritual fatigue is coming from. There are certain levels, there are certain duties that are for the people you have raised, not you again. To create systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your vision. Closely related to this, I wish I had all the time. When God begins to lift you, beware of the people who come in the spirit and power of the young girl who came to meet the apostles. They come with strange spirits, not necessarily demonic spirits. A strange spirit means one that is inconsistent with your vision and the pattern given to you. You must have the courage to drive good people from your life. Just because they are good does not mean they are useful. There are unnecessary baggages we carry because of emotions. There are many good people who cannot enter certain seasons in your life. Ask every leader here, they will tell you. There is a height a plane cannot get to when the load is so much. The lighter, the higher it flies. You need to decongest your life and unclog your life by and with so many things let me tell you for many of us we don't have the courage to be controversial unfortunately it is a requirement to remain if you are too scared of being controversial forget about leading the field hmm. are we blessed systems and structures that protect your focus protect your vision One time I had a group of people and they just said they were coming to my house. Uh, they wanted to come and give an award. I've heard about them. They are very treacherous people. When I heard about them, they said, oh, they're coming. I said, no, 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 I appreciate them. Please carry your award and leave me. I know exactly what they are looking for. They prey on reputations. Anything that looks like a ladder, they climb on it. Let me tell you, be a, beware of many good things. When the devil knows you are conscious of evil, he will use good and destroy you. That tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both the good there and the evil can still do the same thing. There are many good things you have to say no to. To honor your pursuits. I'm sorry to use this expression, but believers prostitute themselves to anything that looks like it can be an addition. And let me tell you when, you, when you move like that, you will not be able to grow. 
all things are lawful but not all things are expedient the discipline of being consistent this is what god has called me to do i focus on it with determination are we together your pastor wakes up every morning to lead several people to pray you know the discipline it takes to do that it's more than grace it takes discipline your mind your alarm clock your discipline the vision that is before you there are times where you literally have to carry yourself up there are times i've traveled where my sleep will be in the plane the only thing i know is that we lifted it's when we're landing and sometimes i'm sleeping and sleeping and maybe the person close to me is just looking at me and i'm showing their mind of ah, this man you are not an old man why are you sleeping like this depends on what you are carrying if you are carrying a cap you can leave it there and even be shaking your head but if what you are carrying is something that feeds nation sometimes you will need to rest there are many good things we need to prune in our lives right now leave the evil things you've overcome that let's talk about good things that are not profitable groups associations be careful be careful champions are champions because they minimize their lives to the necessary so that it can sharpen their focus are we together there are things you need to start delegating people to do if god trusted you while you are changing trust others too it's better for them to fail in your presence you can correct them than to out of fear allow the work to become terrible because you are protecting your reputation it's better for your sons and daughters to make the mistake while you are alive see them rebuke them cover correct correct again till they learn jesus did not wait for perfection before giving us the holy ghost he sent us we keep metamorphosing on the job you must have the courage to trust people apostle you don't know what happened all right sorry i i understand now but you have to summon the courage delegate some things and unclog your life so that your focus can be with precision this is one of the reasons why we have to pray that god will send strong financial helpers because you know sir everybody here will agree with me that one of the most distracting things when you now start rising and building structures is this finance thing we will not leave the ministry of the word and come to be serving tables hallelujah let me do a quick recap then i'll talk about the last one number one humility the stamina to continue is derived from a life of humility number two continuous learning and improvement number three building systems and structures that protect your focus and your values this is very important first corinthians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 9 to 13 very quickly and then the last point and we're done second corinthians chapter 3 from verse 9 it says for we are laborers together with god second corinthians not chronicles first corinthians i meant to say my apologies first corinthians 3 from verse 9 first corinthians 3 from verse 9 for we are laborers together with god ye are god's husbandry you are god's building verse 10 we're reading to 13 verse 10 now it says according to the grace of god which is given to me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builder thereon it says but let every man take heed how he builded thereon verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid he said which is christ jesus reading to 13 verse 12 now it says now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble last verse every man's work shall be made manifest and it says for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is the fire that comes from men 
the fire that comes from the vicissitudes of life it will try your ministry i guarantee you it will try your business but it is a house that is built on a rock that stands may everything you are involved with stand in the name of jesus christ write the various things that take your time and find out which of them you can begin to raise people around you listen if you are a leader at a certain level and you've not raised anybody around you it means you are doing something wrong everybody cannot be wrong there has to be someone that trusts you and believes you enough for you to be able to replicate yourself in them number four The power to continue, the power to remain, is derived from the ministry of prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession. In addition to putting systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values, you must engage strategically in the ministry of prayer and intercession luke chapter 5 from verse 15 luke chapter 5 from verse 15 we'll read 15 and 16 luke chapter 5 now look at this story very interesting story about jesus the bible says but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him now, this was a celebrity making progress. The Bible says his fame had gone abroad. Great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. Next verse, the Bible says in verse 16, And he withdrew himself in the midst of the multitudes, in the midst of the glamour, in the midst of the wonderful things that happened. He withdrew himself into the wilderness. And the Bible says, And prayed he withdrew himself and prayed please let's rise and honor our father is that the best you can do hallelujah most welcome sir thank you amen are we together so the bible says let's go to verse 15 again to put it in context it says but so much the more went a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him making progress already and yet the bible says he had the stamina and the wisdom verse 16 the bible now says he withdrew himself the Bible didn't say he went to pray. He withdrew himself. It took effort and intention. Knowing that this is the secret that brought me thus far. And even in the midst of the fame and the glamour, it would take energy. But he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Prayer and intercession. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. When you get to certain levels of growth, you have to pray. He said, brethren, pray for us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. This must be the prayer of every great man. Because the moment Isaac begins to be great, the Philistines will come. They will envy what you represent. And it has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. It's the side effect of consistency. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Pray for us. Why? Number one, that the word of God may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Number two, the second reason is that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Nehemiah, if you are building, Sambalat and Tobias will come. You don't have to call them. Your result has a voice. It does not just call those who need it. It calls naysayers. It will call any kind of person. And that we may be delivered. That means they can have an effect on you if you don't pray. 
most people downplay what the devil can do using men and systems and structures to sabotage the purposes of God in your life. He said he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Don't you think as a man of God that you are going around bringing deliverance, setting people free by the power of God's word and the devil will fold his arms and watch you. Not even Jesus was spared. Satan cometh to me, he said. When he left Jesus after the temptation, the Bible says he left him for a season. He went to re-strategize because weapons are fashioned. They don't just come. He said no weapon, fashion. To fashion a weapon requires study. It has to study. What have you left in your training? That becomes the weapon that is used. If you neglected finances as you are learning ministry, the weapon will be fashioned after that lapse. It was where Goliath did not cover. That was where David used to bring him down. That we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. And he leaves you with an information. All men, including the ones in your church, including the ones everywhere, the moment you have a multitude, he says, have this at the back of your mind, that all men have not faith. Even if you preach on rapture every day, there are people who do not have faith. Their hearts have been seared with hot iron. There will be easy praise for the devil to use. Men of God must pray. Business people must pray because you are in ministry. Are we blessed? Last scripture and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 39. Matthew 26 and verse 39. Jesus is teaching here. Matthew 26 the Bible says he went a little further Jesus now and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt verse 40 and he cometh to the disciples and he found them asleep and saith unto them what could ye not watch with me one hour 41 watch and pray he said that ye enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing ever willing he says but the flesh is weak watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray when you start your journey it's easy to keep going unhindered but when you get to a certain height and a certain level, the Philistines will come. I assure you, the Bible says the Philistines came and they envied him. They envied him on account of the brightness of his rising. Let's wrap up with that scripture. Genesis 26, 13 to 16. It's one thing to start but it takes another kind of dynamics to continue. And the man began to prosper. That is a level. And he continued prospering until he became. Until he became. Until he became. The man began to prosper until he became that epitome. Of prosperity and the Bible says verse 14 now he had possessions of flocks possessions of herds and a great number of servants and it did not just end there there were also other things that he had that he didn't have before the troubles that come from the Philistines the Philistines envied him they sent him and they said leave us for you are mightier than we your success will always create a reaction in the realm of the spirit and satan will use men and systems and structures but the bible says now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph always thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph my charge to us this afternoon as i wrap up is that it is not enough to start many of us here have done well we have started ministries we've started businesses we've started several things that we work in keeping with these keys god is not only 
the beginning he is also the end it takes grace to continue the grace for humility the grace for continuous learning and development hallelujah the grace for creating systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your vision and finally the power of prayer and intercession you hold these keys as the keys of the kingdom and with them you will be able to remain that even when everything has shaken and everything is moving haywire at the end of it you will still stand because you are building on a rock are we blessed whilst you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and ask the lord to grant you the grace it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it is not just the hearers that receive but those who hear and do is someone praying let it be from the depth of your heart you are crying out to god lord i desire to remain producing results in spite of the sambalats the tobiases i desire to remain in spite of the philistines i obtain grace that i will advance and i will continue now that i have begun grant me the grace to continue that my results will be sustained decades from now it will be sustained by engaging the truth of the kingdom someone is receiving grace and pray and say lord by the privilege of the graces here including the grace of our father that will be coming shortly that you open up your spirit and say there is no excuse for remaining at this level let it come as a prophetic push that will shift us into new levels and new dimensions the bible says go to them that sell and buy there are those who sell and you buy with humility you buy with meekness you buy with humbleness of heart dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord.